Hello again. It's time for another vlog Friday. V v Friday. I can't make that work. But uh, this time I wanted to talk about some things that are a bit more general and less specifically focused on my book, although my book is indicative of my stance on some of these issues, so it should be still relevant. But I'm going to talk about the extremely complex and weighted and probably unnecessarily controversial issue of women in fiction being written by men. Like me. <laughs> so, right off the bat, it's hard to discuss this topic considering that I'm a dude and I write stories about men and women and whatever the heck. In general, when I write, I'm writing about story first. I focus on the story I want to tell, and then I create characters that fit in that story and that can tell the story well based on what they do in the story and on their individual backgrounds. And I try to more or less have an even mix of characters that are male and female. I, I have not always tried to do that. That's something I've kind of been more active about trying to do in recent years than I was back in my high school days when I was writing. Because back in the day, my books consisted primarily of male characters. And the women were there primarily to in some way be romantically attached to the male characters or to be in some way attached to the male characters. They weren't there primarily to tell their own story. It's something I sort of shifted towards the end of, of my high school writing phase, but I've since made a I've since been through college. I've taken many literature classes. I've taken um, I took a, a feminist writing course, and I've I've kind of learned from a series of of experiences I've had in different forms of literature I've read and. Just my experience in the world in general has shown me that female characters are written problematically on several different levels. There have always been good female characters. They have always existed. There have always been more good male characters. And as a man, I'm in a troubling situation where I feel a need to help fix the imbalance. I want to write characters that are female, who are well-written, well-developed, well-rounded, complex characters that deserve to exist to tell their own story, not to be a part of someone else's story, who is male, because that's one of the biggest problems we have with representation of women in fiction. They're not telling the story, they're part of someone else's story. I've wanted to do stories that show female characters as their own storytellers in their own stories dealing with their own issues and And it's not easy to be able to tell a story from the point of view of somebody who is not you. I've always made a genuine effort to try and be more empathetic to people who are not like me, to try and see things from their point of view, even though their point of view may be nothing like my own. And I always try to be respectful and 
to actively seek to see things from their point of view. And that's something that I think is, is crucial for any author at all. No matter what character you're writing, whether it's a man or a woman, you should not just be writing versions of yourself. You should always be writing characters that are new, self-contained, individual people with their own set of traits and life experiences and aspects of themselves that are unique to them. If you always write a version of yourself, whether it be a realistic version, an idealized version, or a compartmentalized version of yourself, you're not writing well. You're writing an autobiography in the form of fiction, which is one of the biggest problems you see with like the the self insert fan fiction style of writing and it's 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 a huge issue that just shouldn't happen at all but specifically when it comes to writing female characters from the standpoint of a male i feel a particular driving need to have male authors like myself actively seek out a female perspective whether it be by getting feedback from women you, you know in real life or by simply like trying to just deconstruct the situation think about what you would do in this situation then think about how much of that has to do with what your own gender is that affects the way you deal with the world around you it, it doesn't necessarily affect it tremendously it doesn't necessarily result in any particular different choices in every given situation. I mean, like, if I were to go to store and buy a, a bag of chips and come back as a male, would my experience be appreciably different if I was a female going to a store to buy a bag of chips and come back with no other interactions? I don't tend to think so. Other than maybe getting my money out of a purse instead of a wallet, maybe. Uh, not necessarily. It, it does it not everything makes a difference but when it comes to like the way i interact with my female friends or the way i interact with my male friends if i were female those same interactions would be different than they are and it's important to sort of feel out where those differences lie and to put them into your characters to create detailed complex characters that are unique on their own one of the things that's become kind of a, a go-to measure to see if a female character is well written in fiction is you many of you have probably already heard of it already but it's called the Bechdel test and basically if you haven't heard of it the issue is uh, ideally it's it's a pass fail test and it consists of are there two female characters in the story that have a conversation with each other that doesn't involve a man that's the test if you ideally the idea is if you pass the test it's a step in the right direction for creating strong female characters and if you fail the test you're part of the problem it's not a perfect test but the fact that it's a test that can't even exist at all is a sign that female characters need to be fixed like the idea, if you were to invert it on its head and, and say, do we have a male version of a, a Bechdel, Bechdel test where two male characters sit and have a conversation with each other that doesn't involve a woman, that would be absurd because almost every story ever written would fit in, under that. Like, you, you wouldn't have, a, it wouldn't be a test worth having. It would always pass. The fact that that is not a given on the other side is a sign that there is an imbalance. It's, it's a factual thing. I mean, like I said, it's not a perfect test. There are plenty of stories that technically pass the Bechdel test. It's not a, it's not a flawless thing. I mean, you can throw in one single conversation where two women talk about something other than a man and pass the Bechdel test, but you could still have enormous amounts of problematic content that just does not work with female characters being represented correctly. And on the other hand, you can also technically have stories that do not pass the Bechdel test, where perhaps there is only one female character present, or perhaps they, there are a couple of female characters and they only talk about guys, but they have 
well-developed characters outside of that, and there's a, a particular reason in the story specifically why they only talk about guys together. It's hypothetically possible. I'm sure there's some that exist, but generally, I, I feel like the fact that the test exists is a sign that we need it and that we need to actively promote better writing for female characters. So that's what I did. And granted, as a male author, who has always been a male author, and can only ever try to see things from a female point of view, can only ask questions and internalize and, and think about things and try and deconstruct situations and try and bring in information that I've had from other experiences and try to see things from another point of view. Trying is all I can do. And I'm not flawless. And I will fail from time to time. And yet, the fact that a lot of people just don't try at all is part of the problem. For one thing, it's just shoddy writing for people to constantly be falling into the same exact character archetypes, where you have women whose only real function is to be the princess in the castle. And I don't personally think there's anything wrong with having those kinds of stories out there. I think it's okay to have some stories out there where the female characters aren't well developed, aren't groundbreaking, independent characters, just like I think it would be okay to have some where the men are not well developed characters. I feel like all stories are worth telling. That's my thought on the issue. And there may be stories where your protagonist is flawed. There may be stories where the supporting characters are flawed. There may be stories where you just, where you do boil it down to archetypes because you're trying to write in a myth form or something like that. Those stories deserve to be tell, told. But the fact is, we live in an age where those stories are always told. And the other stories that have well-developed characters that are not falling into the genre conventions, that are not stereotypes, those stories are the exception rather than the rule. There should always be characters that are new, female or male, and... It's just too easy to fall into a trap where you're writing the same kind of characters that you've seen before. And that's one of the things that I think will help us get out of the situation that socially we've gotten ourselves into where it comes to writing female characters. And as a male author, again, I know I'm not ideally qualified to write good female characters. Ideally, the best written female characters should come from female authors who have experienced firsthand being women. Obviously, that's ideal. That should be how it works. Unfortunately, a lot of female authors write poorly written female characters that fall into the same genre conventions that we're so familiar with. The Twilight books come to mind. Terrible characters. Horrible characters. All of the characters are horrible because the stories are horrible and nothing is redeemable about them in any form whatsoever. But the fact that this is a female protagonist in this story who is written to be a very weak, very codependent, very paper-thin, personality-less, two-dimensional character that just exists to be inhabited by the reader and the author not to be a character in her own right 
the fact that those kinds of characters are written by women too is a sign that this is something that needs to be taken seriously by everyone. And I think ideally we should have more female authors writing good female characters. I'm not a female author, can't be a female author, can be a male author who writes good female characters, and that's what I'm going to do. That's what I've been doing. I can support well-written characters, and I will support well-written characters when it comes to reading, buying, endorsing books, movies, media of any kind. I'm 100% on board with supporting that, but ultimately, when it comes to my direct impact on the on media as a whole, my goal is to write the best characters I can, whether they be male or female, and to create a balance. I'm going to write some stories with male protagonists, I'm going to write some stories with female protagonists, and I'm going to try, actively, going forward, to make it balance between the two. I don't want Tantalus Depths to be my one female-led novel that I'm known for. It's not going to be. For one thing, I'm going to write sequels to it, so there's going to be several more anyway. But for another thing, I intend to try and write on an even playing field where I have about as many male protagonists as female protagonists, because that's how it should be, because there's about as many men in the world as there are women in the world. There should be a balance. The stories, every human being alive has a story of their own. That is their life story. So why are the fictional stories that we write so imbalanced? Why do we have so many stories of this one kind? Where we have so many people of so many different kinds. That's something we got to fix. And I can't fix it all by myself. I'm not going to even try to fix it all by myself. That would kill me to try to, to fix this gigantic system all by myself. Not going to happen. But I am going to try and lead by example. And to make it as good as I can with what I can contribute to it. So that's what I'm doing with Tantalus Steps. Which is why you should buy it. Because it's an awesome book. It's progressive with female character writing and it's a good story and I need you to buy it for me to have more of it in the future. So do that. I don't have anything else to say for this vlog. So bye.